A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, They made kings, but not through me. They set up princes, but without my knowledge. With their silver and gold, they made idols for their own destruction. Your calf is rejected, O Samaria. My anger burns against them. How long will they be incapable of innocence? For it is from Israel, an artisan made it. It is not God. The calf of Samaria shall be broken to pieces. For they sow the wind, and they shall reap the whirlwind. The standing grain has no heads, it shall yield no meal. If it were to yield, foreigners would devour it. When Ephraim multiplied altars to expiate sin, they became to him altars for sinning. Though I write for him the multitude of my instructions, they are regarded as a strange thing. Though they offer choice sacrifices, though they eat flesh, the Lord does not accept them. Now he will remember their iniquity and punish their sins. They shall return to Egypt. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus was walking along, a demoniac who was mute was brought to him. And when the demon had been cast out, one who had been mute spoke. And the crowds were amazed and said, Never has anything like this been seen in Israel. 
But the Pharisees said, by what ruler of the demons does he cast out demons? Then Jesus went about all, in all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and curing every disease and every sickness. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into, the, into his harvest. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. I start off with a question, as usual. Where are you at this present moment, like physically speaking? Are you perhaps with a group of people, maybe at home, either alone or with someone else? Are you perhaps in a nursing home or long-term care home, perhaps in a hospital? Have you been hoping that someone would either maybe call or drop in for a visit. Thank you then for tuning in to this daily TV Mass that is put on especially for you. So thank you for joining us, no matter where you are or what time of day it is. All of us, from the camera crew to uh, the lectors, the singers, and even those in the back room, touching the buttons, making sure that everything goes well. All of us, my dear brothers and sisters, all of us priests and myself, we celebrate the Mass with you in mind, knowing that the power of the Holy Spirit will always unite us in a very, very special way, more than the virtual, but in a special way that the Spirit works with us. You see, in today's gospel, Jesus assures that, and I quote, God who became human feels for all peoples, no matter where you are. God is not detached from us. God deeply, deeply cares about what happens to us, to us, his creation. How often do you recognize or acknowledge God's presence and love for you? Sometimes we all, human beings, we all might think that we are maybe alone, maybe stranded, maybe forgotten by family members and friends because we're not part of the big circle, busy circle out there. And worst of all, perhaps some of us feel abandoned. Not a good feeling, is it? Example, this past month, I had to do one of my regular checks in the local health center and uh, to visit with my doctor. The office or the hospital was smack dab in the middle of a large, large busy city. Now usually uh, I've been very, very blessed that a friend of mine would drive me down so I don't have to take the public transit because of COVID and all the stuff going on. Also, it's time that we spend time together in the car. For this visit, my friend was not able to, to drive me down, so I took public transit with a mask and gloves. It was the first time uh, since the pandemic started. And I remember coming out of the transit that I was in, the bus, and coming out into the street, making my way to the doctor's office, and looking around. The noise of traffic was deafening the construction going on, the emergency vehicles and all that, everything going on. And then, and then God bless them, these young and other people along the sidewalk were sort of uh, like, <laughs> for, forgive me for saying this, they were like ants, but with a mission. And, and they were all doing texting and so on. And, and I thought I was gonna get run over because they were more concerned about the text than about other people on the sidewalk. And I'm thinking, where is God in all of this? Where? All of these people all over the place, and yet I felt totally alone because of, well, everyone was doing their own thing. When I finally got to the, the hospital doors and I, I walked in, the 
quiet, the orderly, the silence, the fresh air was so, so good. When my appointment was done, I came down to the lobby. We had agreed to my, that my friend was going to pick me up. So we had agreed to, to meet uh, after a few minutes. As I was sitting there waiting for my ride, I noticed someone sitting just, just a, few, a few yards away. And I looked at the individual and we caught eyes. And so the two of us sort of started making our way toward one another, of course, through our masks. And as soon as I approached this individual, I could see this glow in her eyes. I thought, wow, wow. Somebody in need to talk, to be listened to. Someone who I think wants to share a couple of things with me. And as we chatted and talked about the weather and how good it was to be where it was nice and quiet and clean and safe and so on and so on, she said, Father, I need your prayers. Now, I didn't have clerics on. I don't know if she knew me from anywhere. I need your prayers. And I said, I guarantee you my prayers. <laughs> With a smile on her face, she said, I know now. I'm not alone. I feel so much better. No matter how many treatments I have to have, I feel so much better because I now know I'm not alone. And as I'm celebrating this Mass, I think of her and I think of so many others who are in need of maybe a little word of encouragement to know that they're not alone. The calls that we get at the office and sometimes notes to say thank you for caring about me. And we do. We care about you very much. But you know what? <laughs> God cares more. And he can be there with you more than we ever could. No matter what pain you're going through, whether it's physical emotional, the pain of abandonment, the pain of loneliness. Turn that away. Get rid of it. And open up your heart to the mercy of God through that Holy Spirit. You know, every time we make the sign of the cross, you know how to do that. And we say, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, you're calling upon the triune God to be with you. Never forget that. And again, please remember that you and I, we are never, ever alone. Let us continue to pray for one another always, always. God knows who needs the prayers more. And until one day we are joined forever in endless happiness, endless company in the presence of Jesus, let us continue to pray for one another, especially when our Blessed Mother is just waiting to hear these beautiful words that we now say together. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And united in prayer, and through Jesus, we pray for Francis, our Pope, for his physical and spiritual well-being. We pray to the Lord. Lord, is For all of those in the daily TV Mass.